All right, we are live. Today is Saturday, March 4th, 2017. Welcome everybody to Saturday webinar. And I have with me Dan Winter. Hey Dan, thank you for joining. And nice to be here. Thank you for inviting me. I have been following you since the beginning of times. I think I've discovered you in 1999. And by that time you were already present online for a while. Your your websites always are very colorful and have lots of colored fonts. So it was very recognizable. Even if you don't put your name on the website, I would still <laughs> recognize it. True, true. Um, so before going into your biography, I wanted to give first announcements. My announcements are simple. Um, so far our webinars were free webinars and paid classes. Now we are almost starting, starting. Jim is sort of approved and we are started doing subscriptions. Maybe it will be monthly subscription for participation in some of the webinars. Some webinars will be free, some webinars will be paid by the subscription. It's not implemented yet, so I invite everyone to voice your suggestions in our group, which is Hukola, H-U-C-O-L-O, private group and on Facebook. So there is a nice place to discuss. Um, next Saturday, we have a nice guest and new channeler, Diet Caver. Diet Caver. I mean, Diet. I might be misspelling her. All right, and um, she is wonderful, and um, Brie will be hosting that webinar. And the next thing is thank you for your donations, they help. Carver, they, they had Carver, thank you for, for helping. All right. Um, we, so that is the first webinar when we have a guest who doesn't go, go do, do tra trans channeling and then just double check, you don't do trans channeling, right? <laughs> well, there's all kinds of trans and Kundalini and lots of experience, but go ahead, go ahead, please. So you, you usually don't do webinars of Bashar's type trans channel, right? Perhaps, yes. Unless you do. <laughs> no, no it, it, <laughs> Okay. But um, I believe Dan is um, is a genius, and he gets his um, his exceptional knowledge from somewhere beyond normal. It's somewhere beyond this um, 3D reality. There is so much there. It is um, unthinkable. Like, it's it's very unique. Like, so, in a, it, it's it's... So my my next question will be how, where where from do you get it? But let's first uh, go into the topic which is um, which is close to what we usually discuss, and this would be the extraterrestrial origins of humanity. And the specific questions I, question I have is: um, Can you put the time frames like the Enki story, uh, Anunnaki story, the all the other creation stories? How do we merge it together with um, with the archaeological traditional mainstream ar archaeological evidence like um the, f the fact that we have a pretty good evidence that we have primate ancestors on earth so extraterrestrial origins from one side and primate earth primates from another side where do they merge how do they come together so Dan, now the microphone is yours <laughs> Thank you. Well, yes, I have been teaching about the ET origins of DNA for maybe 20 years, and I knew lots of the people involved, uh, Morning Sky, Gold, Ghost Wolf, uh, oh, um, Alex Collier, you know, I had the benefit, even Marciniak, all those people knew them pretty well. Um, and of course, as I had intense sort of Kundalini bliss experiences for many years, so I had my own sort of visions and some past life memories, which we could go into. So, but then I, I really began researching it somewhat academically, and um, I began to compare the sources that I'd been working with, and recently it's Anton Park's um, uh, Secret of the Dark Stars and that sort of stuff. And I put the link there where a lot of my extraterrestrial origins article, I have a whole, in, whole index of ET origins article there, which you can access, fractalfield.com slash fusion in the blood. Um, but, you know, I, I in general, I, I'm not a specialist in dates, but I certainly uh, see the, the conventional descriptions of the appearance, what we call the Anunnaki many times in history, and only more recently in the Sumerian epic. And by the way, I think the Sumer means more than the word South Sea. It also means Somer, 
the uh, South American word for dragon, basically. Um, and uh, so I, I think we have a much more clear view these days of what was happening genetically and biologically with those ancestors, sometimes called the Nephilim, and the, meaning the fallen. And I think we know what Nephilim now means, the loss of long-term memory, had to do something with what happened to DNA with too many generations of cloning and loss of vital force. And even more specific, specifically at that link I just put there, fusion in the blood, we even went into quite a bit of detail, a hypothesis of the blood chemistry of the ancient Anunnaki Draco, whom I call Uru, whom Anton Parks called Uras. And that blood, blood chemistry specifically was a lipid oil-based blood that used um, phosphorus for, uh, for um, electron transport instead of iron. And they had a red or a white-based blood, depending on red or white-based phosphorus. And they breathed mostly nitrogen and breathed out cyanogen, accounting for dragon breath. And to that, I think I lost. I lost. Uh, hello, I lost the sound. Is then, is my sound still working? I I I. I muted Valerie and apparently Valerie was you, right? You, did you use Valerie account? Um, it's possible, my partner's named Valerie. Um, yeah. I'm not, I don't... Here you go, so I, I was thinking that some Valerie making noise and apparently it was you, so I muted you for last 20 seconds. And take a breath, just let's do it slower. It's just too much information at the, at the moment, at, at per unit of time. Thank you, please continue. Well, ju just to say that we're pretty confident we know what they described as the Nephilim or to fall, which was um, a loss of implosion in the DNA due to lack of charge density, actually, which came, came from many generations of cloning instead of passion and many generations of living inside metal structures where DNA lost the ability to implode. Uh, we plotted the geometry of that in DNA very extensively at this link I'll put in the chat window, goldenmean.info slash DNA manifesto, and my animations of how that works in DNA by a recursive braiding algorithm are pretty famous. But basically, I was the one who inspired the study done that DNA braid density varies measurably with our coherence, and loss of passion directly uh, affects loss of the DNA's ability to achieve phonon implosion by recursive uh, sonic piezo braid recursion, basically to implode the DNA, which is how you get passion and how you get a soul and how you get bliss. <laughs> and we have a lot of biofeedback. Uh, well, let me translate, because I think I understand my, most of the words, but I'm sure my, uh, my crowd is lost in about every, every second word. So braiding of DNA is how it is coiled and super coiled and coiled again. So you connected the coiling of DNA, braiding of DNA to heart coherence and to emotion, yes. right? That, that, that was, I, I invented the term heart coherence and I'm credited in the academic literature for doing that because I invented the mathematics and technology to measure heart coherence. And it was at my suggestion then that Glenn Ryan measured the effect of heart coherence on braid, braid density in DNA, the presence of the enzyme of the zipper. So basically, DNA is a, a thread which is then braided into a string and into a rope and into a fat rope, recursively, actually seven times. And the phase discipline of that braid recursion responds measurably directly to the amount of coherence in the low frequencies of the EKG. We proved that with Glenn Ryan's help. So basically, we have biophysics proof that emotion, coherent emotion, causes your DNA to implode. <laughs> Bliss, actually. And I So can you define imploding? Absolutely. <laughs> Implosion is my life's work. Um, people can see my new book on that subject. It's called Biologic Origins of Negentropy. It's at our main website, fractalfield.com. Implosion occurs, first let me give some examples. Uh, when Victor Schauberger's water vortex piezo doped was about to generate electricity from gravity. Did I, did I lose you? Um, for a second, now you're back. Okay, sorry. Yeah, so when Victor Schauberger's water vortex 
was about to generate electricity from gravity. It worked so well, Hitler wrote him a check. Uh, it would spontaneously begin getting colder, and we know why. And when the tubes in my therify.net plasma rejuvenation technology uh, are doing their healing, it's called make entropy, they also spontaneously get colder. So implosion is what happens when um, waves converge at a point like in a, in a tornado so perfectly it looks like pine cones kissing noses. And the technical term for that is phase conjugate negentropic charge collapse. It's the subject of my book, which is why our technology group is called implosiongroup.com. And you can see our dozens of technology projects there at implosiongroup.com. So essentially, the wave mechanics to visualize how it works. Uh, well, for just one more example. Uh, so people can have some science perhaps can relate when two lasers uh, meet precisely from opposing directions uh, with angstrom level phase accuracy inside a nonlinear media called a phase conjugate mirror they 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 create um, a phase conjugate optics which creates a self-organization actually it's the first time self-organization had been measured in physics and so that we, we believe we understand how that implosion happens the waves converge by golden ratio called phase conjugation and the phase velocity is added multiply recursively and they turn compression of charge towards center into acceleration of charge towards center called implosion which you can read in the book is the cause of life force gravity color Consciousness, bliss, perception. Let's let's explain a little bit. So, what is, what field converts to what field? Electric to. Well, of course, it's a unified field, and the rotation of charge accounts for all of them. But mm -hmm. basically, when the waves of charge occur, converge in the geometry of pine cones kisses, kissing noses, it looks like a caduceus. Actually, I usually use my animations for this presentation. Mm -hmm. um, I will put the the web link to all the visuals that usually go with this part of the presentation in the chat window, goldenmean.info slash PowerPoint. And people can see the PowerPoint that has all the visuals as we discuss this. So if you look at the top maybe, down maybe, view. Excuse me. Maybe you can share the, the screen if you want to. Well, I, I think that would be too much. Let's let's use Word because Adan <laughs> does so many presentations visual, but really I want to exp and I'm lost actually. Like when I usually well, go there, I have to watch it like ten times to get part of. Let it. me refer to a specific visual that you can do. Right. Very, it's best. It's best to do this visual in your head anyway. Here's the visual: you have the top-down view of DNA, Earth grid, zodiac, and every living protein, which is a nest of pentagrams, which is. Uh, five and ten spirals of the golden mean. So that's the top-down view. And it's also the top-down view of a pine cone. So that, if you see how ten spirals of the golden mean converge, uh, which I recently was the first to prove is, is the physics of the radii of hydrogen, for example. So when those waves converge by golden mean ratio, they add and multiply constructively, not just the wavelengths, but the phase velocities. And that adding and multiplying of phase velocities means compression in that geometry and only that geometry turns compression of charge into acceleration of charge towards center. That acceleration of charge is because the phase velocities add and multiply recursively, constructively, only in golden ratio. And the name for that is called the gravity. Mm -hmm. so, so I'm are you I'm saying like, that electricity converts to gravity? Absolutely, that's precisely what I'm saying. And so unlike Einstein and Stephen Hawkins and NASA, I know why an object falls to the ground. And it's critical to know that in order to know the cause of consciousness and perception, and also to know, for example, why focused human intention so dramatically, measurably causes electric fields to compress, as Bill Tiller proved in his book, Conscious Acts of Creation. Speaking about implosion, I understood the word as just explosion coming inside in in the center right <laughs> well that's that's the beginning of a way to talk about it and neg entropy is the opposite of entropy which is to say if you believe the universe is going to entropy you believe everything is going to disorder and the opposite is the case so so self-organization is basically just saying self-organizing right 
Yes, exactly. Self-organization was first measured in physics and phase conjugate optics. And now I've invented phase conjugate magnetics, phase conjugate phonon, and the phase conjugate plasma at mytherify.net, successful for rejuvenation in 12 countries, is commercially successful proof. Right. Wow. Uh, what so, is the Therify? Go ahead. What sure. is the Therify? Therify looks like two sun lamps lined up so precisely that the plasma causes uh, pine cones to kiss noses between <laughs> between them. That's what it looks like. Um, best to look at the website, Therify. Is that a healing modality in a way, yes. in a manner of speaking? Yes, about the most powerful healing ever documented on the planet was Antoine Priori's plasma healing in France. The French government proved thousands of cases of cancer completely healed. I then discovered the principle, and unlike Priori, it was able to perfect it, and it's called Therify.net. It, it actually looks like the Egyptian symbol for the caduceus in a plasma tube, and uh, the, the tip of the tubes gets uh, colder spontaneously, and there are dozens and dozens of, re of reports of what happens when you do that. And we have demonstration sites all over the world. So I, on the photograph, it looks like two plasma guns shooting at each other. So yes, they meet in right. the center. Yeah. They, they call them pink roses, pink roses. <laughs> pink roses. So these plasma guns look like glass cylinders uh, they're, sealed from, they're, all, from all, all, all sides. And they have some they're very expensive, very expensive Pyrex plasma tubes that contain noble gases that are fired with a complex frequency signature at about a half million volts in precise phase relationship from a bifiller Tesla coil. Um, actually, the most important point to make about this, perhaps, to anyone who is serious about science, is the new equation which drives everything I will talk about today um, and drives the therify and is the cause of gravity, perception, bliss, color, and consciousness. That equation is Planck length and time times integer exponents of golden ratio called phase conjugation. It's on the cover of my book and it, at fractalfield.com. And that equation predicts the exact two frequencies, the only two that make photosynthesis happen. It pr predicts the radii of hydrogen, predicts uh, adenosine diphosphate, it predicts uh, HF, LF of HRV, and the duration of Earth year, Venus year, precession, galactic year, et cetera. So these are called phase conjugate negentropic charge collapse, and it is the origin of biologic negentropy, which is the title of the book. So that equation I discovered predicted the frequencies like Lakowski and Reif and Priori that they used to heal. And by making that precise, we have a healing technology which we think is gonna lead the planet in this area. It's literally time reversal. So let me document what's happening here. People hear about magical cure, and some someone asked, you know, can we get cure right away? And I guess I have to address that question to you. Can we get that cure right away? Well, I mean, clearly at therify.net, we do not make medical claims. We do sometimes publish hundreds of anecdotal reports. And I can say that in general, uh, short-term pain we're able to deal with in one or two or three five or 10 minute sessions. Long-term and chronic pain, we're able to help perhaps even a majority of cases, which is amazing. Uh, and we're starting FDA trials actually. And long-term pain typically takes five to 14, five to 10 minute sessions over that many days, roughly. And the reason it worked, we're quite famous for back pain, for example, and that's only the beginning of lots, lots of diseases. The physics is quite clear that your aura basically needs a climax implosive collapse to achieve phase sorting called mm -hmm. implosion or charge collapse. And by creating that field, which is implosive around your body, you basically create a charge cocoon. And there's many names for what happens. Time reversal is one of the names for commonly used, but actually time reversal in physics, it has a very limited meaning. It, it means returning to order. You cannot time reverse to disorder <laughs> actually in physics. So, but I suggest try, try the Therify Plasma experience there. They're in 12 countries at the link therify.net. And also we have a big conference coming up here in France and lots of doctors are involved and it's, it's powerful. And it, we have a biofeedback series of technologies to, it, to make that more self-empowering, HRV heart biofeedback at iThrive.com. There's three applications there, wireless transmission through half a dozen transducers to iPhone, iOS. And then 
uh, coming shortly is the brainwave biofeedback claim in mind.com. It's the same thing for EEG. So well, if someone had aggressive multiple sclerosis, would that be something that would help cure them of that? That's a, that's a very appropriate question. And certainly this is not a panacea. We have been able to help some people with some very intense diseases. And I believe um, there are some of our centers that have worked on MS. And I think we've been able to help certainly with the pain and in some cases more than that. Uh, I know we've helped some serious Alzheimer's patients, some serious Lyme's disease patients, but I don't have detailed reports yet on MS and I'm not going to make medical claims. But we do believe that we're able to help a lot of people with chronic diseases. Actually, uh, I have a sister that is involved with that work and uh, we're, we're serious about looking at that. What, what's the mechanism? How does it work? Um, on our website there, therify.net slash static, you can see our wave mechanic model for cancer, for example, um, that uh, clearly cancer is um, the frequency cascade of cellular bioenergetics gone awry in the sense that the cell processes the long wave of incoming protein food to a very short wave, high frequency coherent ultraviolet light called blue fire or the sex juice of the cell. And the high quality UV light, everyone agrees, is the biophysics that drives DNA replication, meiosis, mitosis. Now, if that ultraviolet coherent light, literally sex juice of the cell has no way out, it would then be forced into premature replication, literally promiscuity. And the clue there is that the cancer cell is almost invariably more spherical with a membrane that's too hard. In fact, contact inhibition defines cancer. So when you provide a path out for the buildup of literally sex juice, blue fire UV, you provide an escape from premature uh, replication, which is cancer. And that cascade is precisely because our uh, high frequency field, which begins in the optical but all the way down, um, is tuned precisely to Planck and hydrogen. So it provides a path for increased charge distribution. An increased charge distribution, if you know anything about biophysics, is a definition of the end of cancer, actually. Charge, cancer, by definition, is loss of charge distribution. Basically fractal, fractality, which is another way of saying get fractal or get dead, which is my bumper sticker. <laughs> All right, let me translate. Um, I think I understood most of that. Um, so basically, the I, I, I heard it, it's from Fritz Albert Pope, the idea that cancer tumors and cancer cells isolate themselves electrically from the body and stop being controlled by the body. Like the whole body is electrically connected and cancer just isolates itself. Yeah, and right. um, you, uh, your device uh, shakes somehow the 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 atoms. It's it's not even not even by molecules, but even the atoms, as you mentioned, and somehow restores this electrical connection through some through some fields. And my question, if if it is correct, my question is, what is is it that this field physical, measurable, or is it something transdimensional which science doesn't oh, know yet? It's, it's very physical and measurable. Actually, I suggest you study Tom Bearden's work on longitudinal EMF as the mechanism mm -hmm. of bo most bioactive field and bioactive healing. And the articles about uh, Tom Bearden's work on longitudinal EMF, which is what Therify.net produces, are at the bottom of the link I just put there, Therify.net slash static. Basically, the, the longitudinal is a compressional wave. And most of our electromagnetics are transverse, which is the wave is a, like the crests. Whereas if you convert the, tra the transverse wave, which is up and down, into a compressional wave, which is sometimes called scalar or torsional, but the correct ter term is longitudinal EMF, then it will compress all the way down to the atomic nucleus. This is Tom Bearden's life work, actually very famous. And everyone agrees longitudinal EMF is how to produce healing. We just happen to be best at it because we understand exactly how it's produced, which is called phase conjugate charge collapse. So uh, you the visual you fractalize make the, the field fractal, right? Yeah, fra which is precisely fractal. Fractality mm -hmm. then is defined by golden ratio because that is self-similarity self -similarity mm -hmm. optimized for wave mechanics. The visual is simple. As you visualize the wave going down a pine cone, it enters uh, rotationally moving up and down. But as it goes down the pine cone, it's called optimized translation of vorticity, which is how you define golden ratio in a hydrodynamics physics. 
that the inertia goes from up and down as it emerges from the pine cone out the end, the inertia is now longitudinal compression. And that longitudinal EMF is faster than light, goes through just about anything. Uh, practical example, the holy grail of plasma fusion is uh, plasma uh, heat containment, which is this is the answer to. Uh, a good way to think about that is on the day that Ingo Swan lit a fire, I mean heated a thermistor with his mind at a distance through a Faraday cage measured many times, we know the frequency signature in his brain that allowed him to do that. It's called flameinmind.com. So the right and left hemisphere make golden, golden ratio between alpha and beta called phase conjugation, but the right and left hemisphere have to be 180 degrees out of phase. You know, the Bon Po and the Cherokee won't initiate a shaman until they can light a fire with their mind, and now we know how and why and how to teach that. And that's what Therify is. And that's what flameinmind.com does for brainwave biofeedback. Yeah, so let me translate. So people ask what it means. And I think what, what you mean is that normal electric field goes um, transverse, up and down. Up and, down. Yes. and then you make a vortex which comes to a point. Yes. And when yes. you push it through that point, it becomes longitudinal, longitudinal. So it goes back and forth instead of up and down. Yes. Yes. And, yes. Um, and that yes. creates something which is faster than light, and it is beyond uh, school physics, for sure. Well, actually, um, it's very teachable in physics, but you have to start your physics lesson by learning that that's what goes faster than the speed of light. Actually, um, it's what creates action at a distance. It's the wave mechanic of mitogenic radiation, biologic radio. It's literally how the collective unconscious works. It's how the communion of saints works. It's how you take memory through death at a burial ground. We know the wave mechanics. And it starts with learning how longitudinal waves work. A very practical example, um, when the, not only did the placement of labyrinths and Gothic cathedrals require magnetic line crosses, but when you were placing the cozy rev mirror metal cylinders to produce military quality telepathy thousands of miles apart every time, the first thing you needed to do was measure the magnetic line cross in nano Teslas. And the reason that's the only place you could get military quality telepathy, and by the way, Karatkov measured that and where Ko Kogis went to make phone calls to ancestors and the same physics applies. So when the magnetic line cross, they create what's called phase conjugation, sometimes called as four directions in the traditional medicine, medicine wheel literature. And that embeds in the longitudinal EMF, which is the wave mechanics of biological radio, you know, collective unconscious and all that stuff. So basically, for example, we do remote healing with plasma. You start by placing the device and the person to be healed on these crosses. Right. Um, it's a good time to do a disclaimer. Let's do a proper disclaimer. So you don't have anything in the United States because United States don't let you in, right? Or you have something. Oh, no, we have dozens. We have dozens all over the world and many in America. Yes, our, our project is totally legal. Um, since there's no measurable radiation over one megahertz, it's non-hazardous. We make no medical claims. Detailed disclaimer, therify.net. And, of course, we're looking at FDA trials, but in the meantime, it's totally legal and totally safe, and we make no, no medical claims. But if, as, if hundreds of people report it's useful and want to try it, we're happy to share it around the world, and we do. But we're very responsible, about it, and we p encourage people to work with absolutely medical and professional scientific people, and we're being successful with that approach, and we respect. And, and, you so, know, well, the, so what is permitted? Uh, the person have to sign some some form that it is an experimental, sure, right? Oh yes, of course, yes, normal, yes. And uh, which cities do you have in the United States? Can um, people approach this? Place? If you look, at, if you look at therify.net, mm -hmm. there are many uh, in in North America. The public sites at therify.net, and you'll see many descriptions there uh, in California, in Connecticut, in New Jersey, and New York, and more coming soon, uh, Vancouver, uh, they're all over the world. So what is the procedure? Uh, do you, like the, the, that conversion or whatever, the implosion happens in one point between the, the guns, but you don't go there, right? You're not between them, you're kind of nearby. Right. No, actually, we, we place the patient directly between carefully aligned plasma tubes and oh. the phase relationship of the complex wave. Each wave looks like a caduceus, all the way from optical right down to sub, you know, Schumann level. And it's literally the frequency signature of human bliss is how we modulate the plasma, actually. 
and it's great for brainwave entrainment and HRV, sacrocranial pulse entrainment. And so they're lined up precisely, and the person's right in the center. Where do you focus? Which place? Well, a lot of people have excellent bliss experience sort of lying on a massage bed with above the head and below the feet. But for specific conditions, a lot of times we will focus in closer with them seated in a chair. Oh, you will focus on a specific organ, right? Yes, we can, we can focus. On, for example, the medical doctor who arrived at the Per Pignan uh, demonstration cut his finger in the door walking into the room. And he, um, we put it in the Therify plasma field, and in about four minutes, all bleeding and pain was gone. And with the second short session, uh, the pain was gone permanently. Uh, we need a biological experience. Four fingers controlled and four fingers... Um treatment and then <laughs> test and something quantitatively measurable. Can I ask a question? And the, 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 go ahead. Are you talking, when you're talking about all of these modalities, are you talking about machines that you've created or are you talking about energetic healing? Uh, Therify.net is an example of a plasma energetic healing device. I'm certainly not saying it's the only solution, but it's a very helpful good start. Okay. The other devices, uh, the biofeedback devices, use transducers, uh, iThrive.com, FlameInMind.com, to measure okay. this. So the reason I'm I asking is because I've done, I do energetic healing, and sometimes people can see plasmic beings around me when I'm sending exactly. healing, but I don't even know what plasma beings are, so or what they do. No, no. <laughs> so that's a great stuff. That's a great start so there. Maybe, we would encourage, in fact, the, so maybe the, the lady tell us what a plasma being is and what it can do for a person. Well, I mean, we're all plasma beings. Plasma is physics name for a cloud of charge. And according to physics, 99.99% of the universe is charged. So there's nothing that's not a plasma being. Your cloud of charge called your aura is a plasma being, you know. But um, I give it a practical example. Uh, the Therify.net center in South France, Perpignan, Therify.fr, the lady who runs it, Christine, who's wonderful, she's a medical intuitive, and she uses the Therify to uh, create clairvoyance very successfully. Um, and we know why it creates clairvoyance, because, you know, the GDV, Curlian, uses a high-voltage bias to make the weak charge field visible. That's called Curlian photography. And the point I wish to make is that being able to see the charge, which is very helpful, is only the beginning. The, the key is to direct it. In fact, the Therify and plasma healing devices in general are able to light a tornado, which is helpful, but it takes intent to steer it. So we absolutely encourage people to focus their intent and develop. And you literally, the plasma becomes self-aware and wants to be talked to like a puppy dog. <laughs> um, as we are on the, on, the, on, the, on the topic of energetic healing, I had a question which I think is very relevant is, what is the physical nature of chakras? <laughs> well, if, if, if I'm permitted an ad here, if you could go to ithrive.com and ithrve.com and download our chakras application. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, but no, uh, the chakras refers to a, a, a plexus, a convergent point in the weak capacitive field of the body. That's one of the... And because there is in the literature the frequency signature of the chakras, and Karatkov a GDV uses that as well, bio-well.eu. Uh, so we're able to identify which chakra is being lit up by your heart rate variability and breath by the frequency signature. And that's the basis of our chakras application, which is lots of fun. Oh, I didn't Hi, get I it. Question. Okay, go ahead. Hi, I'm Zach. I'm new here. So what you're saying is all those plasma frequencies as well as any other biofeedic machine that sends frequencies, when it sends into your body, and heats, the question is, is it sending in a, a cone-type frequency? Like you're stating, like it's stating that it's going to get big and then it's going to get small into like a tornado into intertwining. Is, is that what you mean? Well, let me try to give you a practical way to think about this. Um, if you remove the poisonous fluorescent light from your child's classroom and install sunlight, you measure a dramatic increase in attention span. Well proven. Let's think about the physics of why. The frequencies in that fluorescent light do not fit my equation, so they prevent charge implosion, named attention. 
whereas the frequencies of sunlight, harmonics of hydrogen and Planck, which do fit my equation, allow implosive charge collapse called attention. Do you see? Also, no resistance. Pardon? It sounds like it's no resistance, nothing like detrimental towards your health. Well, it, it, in other words, everything in nature needs to implode or be canceled out. And that implosion is sometimes called attention or bliss or consciousness or the one or grounding or gravity or get fractal or get dead. But it, medically, it's why if you walk a lot barefoot in the mud and well grounded, you have health. And if you fail to get grounded, you die. The book is called Earthing. It's well proven. Grounding is access to the fractality of perfected charge distribution. It's well proven. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, I think Zakaria, Zakaria, your first question I think was pretty much on the point. It, these are cones, yes. The, 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 yes. Yes. Their fields are conical, and they focus on one point. Yes. We, we sometimes sense. call this. We call this the mind of God, or getting in touch with the collective, or the collective mind. But we now know the physics. It is absolutely the equation on the cover of my book: Planck length and time times integer exponents golden ratio, called phase conjugation. And, and that frequency signature enables charge implosion, and that's what creates, that's the reason color exists, it's the reason gravity exists, it's the reason consciousness, the reason bliss exists, etc., and healing and negentropy. So let, let me just say that um, I heard you speaking about that, uh, actually I read you, you were writing about that in 1999, and it was now 18 years ago, right? And... Um, at that time, it was so much far out. I was thinking that you are talking in the right direction, but I had no grasp, you know, if it is real or not. And the the farther I go, the more I realize that you just uh, you you speak very very correct stuff. It just reaches me maybe many years later. <laughs> so so you're way behind we, yet. We made a decision years ago that we would pursue the absolute correct physics but we wouldn't wait for the physics literature instead what we would do we would build it and sell it and that has worked fabulously <laughs> yes, so, absolutely. <laughs> yeah yeah i have an example like um i was in the field of uh studying non-coding rna and for many years it was considered uh, alternative and wasn't funded and it was repressed and my one of my close collaborators, co-author, her laboratory was closed and she died in grief. And uh, it didn't take a fight. And the, the non-coding RNA became um, just a mainstream when it became commercial. It, it, yes. The scientists didn't prove that it, that it exists. They just started selling non-coding RNA, which is silencing RNA. And when people buy it and it works, nobody needs any proofs, right? So well, that's the principle, thing, yes. What, once people see something work, then you can teach the principle. Our theimploder.com is an example. I built the perfect spiral cone to implode water, and we're successful in almost every country on Earth for water fertilization using implosion, theimploder.com. It's one of the most powerful cultural on the, on the planet. So you simply build the technology, and once it sells, then the, the academics and universities and governments chase you instead of the other way around. <laughs> they're, they're bowing when you when you have made something. Right. So now I think it's a good time to talk about your, where do you get your uh, uh, your knowledge? Do you channel it? Do, are you an extraterrestrial? <laughs> uh, alien mutant spore, is that the word my mother would have used? No. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I I had some flashes of past life memories, as most people do when they grew up. For example, John D. However, um, then in the Gurdjieff School in West Virginia, Claymont.org, I began to have intense bliss experiences, literally Kundalini, and would probably have been hospitalized, except I was adopted by uh, the uh, the guy who wrote the book on the biomechanics of Kundalini, uh, Bentoff, Stalking the Wild Pendulum. So, you know, 30 years of pretty intense Kundalini. And I, I perhaps am a world leader in teaching what the biomechanics of Kundalini are as a result. I actually was in psychophysiology graduate school at the time. And this is the a web article with graphics on that. So Kundalini, we now know as it's measurable in the, in the microwave and we know the phonon geometry and the spine liquid and the brainwave signature. We know a lot about it. 
And it's basically charge implosion. And so when you can inhabit the center of a lightning bolt, uh, imagine the hero in the movie Powder. Um, the only thing you can do when you're living in the center of a lightning bolt is uh, uh, focus on pure principle, a perfectly shareable wave, which is to say something that would serve all of DNA. And at that point, you can stay in the center of the lightning bolt without being burnt. <laughs> and that's what Kundalini is. That's what bliss is. That's what charge density is. That's the mind of God, whatever you want to call it. So when you can, when you can, the more bliss experience you can handle without getting toasted, the closer you are to, to come to the central information river, as it were. Now, most most cases of Kundalini, you'll have some kind of the city, as it were. Uh, in my case, it was Claire Audience, actually, uh, but there are many examples. And uh, so I began to connect with some past lives, et cetera, et cetera. A bit of a long story. But and recently, our work on the history of John Dee and Shakespeare uh, at fractalu.com. You can read all about that there. That um, the science that John Dee put into Shakespeare is incredible. And that's part of my sort of little piece. I call it a soul fragment rather than a past life memory. Yes. But did the, you the key visual here. Meditation? Pardon? Did you do all of this through meditation or is this just part of your makeup as what? the kind of human you in the are? Gurdjieff school, in the Gurdjieff school, uh, just to give a little flavor. So there I am, 21 years old, double Scorpio and a virgin and frustrated. <laughs> and then we start doing sacred gymnastic in George Washington's nephew's pig farm, claimon.org. And I start having these intense Kundalini experiences. And, uh, and of course I learned to meditate, et cetera, et cetera. And this was in West Virginia? Yeah, it was in West Virginia. How do you Claymont spell it? Claymont.org. Yeah, um, it was founded by, by Bennett who did the, actually um, my sacred gymnastics teacher, Pierre Elliott, got his PhD in physics from the Sorbonne on the physics of flame, which actually is my study now because the physics of flame is actually the physics of bliss. That's why you call it flameandmind.com. So. Uh, so in uh, 99, uh, your websites were shut down. Can you tell that story? By um, I, I, had, I wrote an equation to animate the origin of the Hebrew and Sanskrit alphabet. Uh, and that's at goldenmean.info slash DNA ring. Now, um, which is the physics of how you create propulsion in your mind, the physics of creating golem, and the only way to steer in dreaming and death is actually the plasma vectors, which is this golden spiral in the torus that uh, the shadow of which is called Hebrew and Sanskrit indexed by Tetra. So after I did that work, a group that only had a piece of jewelry, a Stan Ten and Meru, sued me. And they had a well. They had a free lawyer, and I spent a hundred thousand dollars wasted it trying to teach a federal judge what an equation was. And in the end, it was more convenient to leave the United States, which was a huge blessing, best thing I ever did in my life, <laughs> practically. And uh, and so one website I had at that time, uh, of course, the federal judge took down. But now I have hundreds, and uh, and. Uh, so, but the point is that it was very useful because that golden, the equation I wrote for the golden spiral on the torus that self organizes that creates the origin of sacred alphabets is actually the beginning of learning how the vector direction of plasma donuts in the brain, in the mind, actually becomes the only navigation mechanism you have when you are a plasma field, uh, lucid dreaming, dying. So you, you self organize the golden spiral on the torus and you see the shadows indexed by the tetra, and that's called Hebrew and Sanskrit. Um, you mentioned uh, creation of Golem. Uh, I'm connected yes. to Maharal of Prague, the creator of Golem. I'm his descendant. <laughs> we have all these conferences in Prague about this, actually. <laughs> well, just let me give you a, a one specific example. When when you go to the four corners of a room, as in an Ophanim Enochian Golden Dawn ritual, and you you accurately visualize the correct Hebrew letter in sequence. What happens is that Hebrew letter, remember it's a shadow of a golden spiral on Taurus, is determining the phase angle of the charged donut around your head. And when you release that and it floats towards center, you focus it. If those two donuts converge in what's called phase conjugation, it implodes and it changes the air pressure in the room enough to blow the doors off the church. And that's called casting a spell. And that's actually the physics of all creation. So how do you get your knowledge? What's your process of discovering new stuff? 
<laughs> well, I was curious actually. Plus, I realized I realized a long time ago that only pure principle lives forever, and everything else is boring. <laughs> so the pure principle of wave mechanics is everything. That's what sacred. Ge Originally, I was known as a teacher of sacred geometry, but it's actually the wave mechanics of creation, and that's what you focus on if you want to live in the center of lightning bolts, <laughs> which is where God lives, I think. <laughs> so you can share your secret. What, what do you mean I can't share my secret? I just did. <laughs> uh, like, you know, just mechanically, what do you do? You Do you walk to think? Do you talk to think? Do you like dream, meditate? You have Kundalini experience? How do you get your knowledge? Well, here, l l let me give you some, some thoughts about that. First, um, of course, I was blessed when I was young. Uh, you know, I had Scorpio DNA, et cetera, et cetera, and a relatively evolved nervous system, perhaps. But it, it, it's, more, it's more work than that. But um, um, after you begin having bliss experiences, the, the most likely thing that happens is you go insane. <laughs> the less likely thing that happens is that all the information of the universe comes to you. And the difference is being able to have a, uh, a discipline to understand pure principles. Uh, I give you the example, um, uh, a lot of people who, when they have Kundalini, they basically become crybabies, uh, like Krishnamurti <laughs> or Gopi Krishna. These guys were just crybabies about their Kundalini. Like, it hurts, it hurts. No, no, it's, it's implosion. And so um, if instead you have learned a discipline in order to understand the pure physics, I mean, God lives in the principles of pure physics, that's the truth. And I had a background in electrical engineering and psychophysiology, which helped me tremendously. So you need a very accurate vision of the wave mechanics of creation in order to not go crazy when you have intense bliss. But if you do, then you can do what my friend Grace did actually when she was having her ablutions on the lake at Mount Shasta and she felt her aura go into the heart of the sun and saw through like an eyeball. We know the physics of that process. Got it. So you prepare yourself, you know the question, and then when you are there, you you crystallize it basically, crystallize the answer. Well, yes, but let's let's talk about uh, you know the the million correct decisions for hygiene that it takes to keep that kind of charge around your body. Basically, if I was living in a city with electrosmog, bad air, and bad food, I wouldn't have a prayer. You know, I live in the mountains on a magnetic line, breathing the best, most pristine air, water, and magnetism of Europe, and it's a blessing. And I don't really want to go very far from that. And when you sleep on those lines and do it right, then you can hold that kind of charge. But this is hygiene, and that's discipline. Absolutely. Yay. Where, where, where are we located? Well, I, you know, for public consumption, I'm based in Australia, back and forth to Europe. Right now, I'm in South France and very happy about it. Uh -huh. Sleep on what lines? Go ahead. Pardon? Sleep on what lines? Well, um, in the same way that the Therify plasma device is best, most functional when it's on a magnetic line here from the mountain, for example, um, where you sleep is, is one of the most important decisions you make in your life, actually. And the old adage here is make a magnetic map of your bed, your house, your yard, in your city and when they all look like a rose then you're ready to go <laughs> yeah i i just live now on on the mountain it's uh, on a on a big hill it's 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 different it's all, oh, all noisy i have a road nearby but i had like i had to make a choice and uh, yeah how do you map the magnetic uh what what instruments do you use to map the magnetism of your location well, I mean, there are nano Tesla devices, and uh, our people in geobiology are very good at that. I'll put a link in your goldenmean.info slash geobiology. Classically, it's basic dousing. That's what it is. The thing about dousing is basically the more bliss you have, the better your DNA is at measuring a magnetic line. I can't figure oh, out who's oh, making the noise. Somebody is making the noise. I can't see that. Okay, it's muted now. The, the, the Sufi saying, only love bends the light, therefore only love creates. What they mean is that when your DNA is imploding, it's more attractive to charge and you can feel these magnetic lines much better. I started doing a portal uh, ceremony. I found a place on the beach. It's um, um, San Diego, La Jolla place. And um, there is a big, uh, big, how do you say, co nah, I can, don't know the English. Big hill, and there is a, a 
a canyon coming down and when the canyon comes down to the ocean there is some sort of geomagnetic um, different thing like feels very good uh, so my question is uh, what kind of meditation of collective meditation would you suggest we do to help this portal or help this uh, vortex there well <laughs> that's a wonderful question you know we are setting up to do ma two major global meditations uh, with experiments like that using both the plasma and people meditating around the planet in a synchronized way. The, the first event is at fractalu.com, uh, Global Synchronized Verify Meditation, and that event is March 19 at 2 p.m. New York time. And we already know that when multiple sites use plasma synchronized, it greatly enhances meditation and basically it's a, <laughs> a stargate. Uh, so and, we, uh, we have we just join. We don't have to have a plasma device to join, right? Absolutely. No, of course, of course. And the other one is part of the major conference we're having here in South France on July 24. And you can read that about that at fractalfield.com slash 2017. I'll put the link in the chat. Window. Thank you. So what what do what what do we do? Like I um I invented some sort of or intuited some some sort of meditation there. But do you have any suggestions how to meditate on the on the vortex? Well, <laughs> you know, it, it, we, you can get very sophisticated in the answer to that question. We're developing what we think will be the state of the art EEG technology for teaching meditation. That's what flameandmind.com is. Uh, start by learning to make alpha and then learn to make your beta and theta golden ratio in frequency and then you learn right left hemisphere 180 degrees and you begin to experience increasing charge density implosion I mean since it's measurable that doesn't mean you have to have measurement to do it but it's nice that you can see the physics absolutely um, I still want to get some feeling about um the origins of uh, humanity and uh, the the participation of the aliens. Can you put a time frame? You know what happens first: Atlantis, destruction of Atlantis, or Anunnaki uh, creating uh, creating the humans? Um, clearly, the Anunnaki, Draco. I choose to call them Uru Uras. Uh, visited many times in, in the early civilizations, and Sumeria was not the first time. Um, Atlantis, for example, was named Thule after Tehute, uh, uh, who is basically Hermes, and uh, actually T DWD was another name for Tehute, the line of David, which is uh, a, a bloodline which became called Thothmosis, which is a name for the kings of Egypt, sons of Thoth. Um, and Atlantis was named for Tehute for a very specific reason. It was the geometry concentric rings of water and land were implosive capacitively for a very specific reason. Um, these were technologies to produce uh, uh, focus of life force, actually, and fertility. And uh, everything about the Hermes mythology, starting with the Caduceus, is today described as phase conjugation. And, and we claim to represent the Hermetic school in physics today as direct result, actually. Yay. So the time frame, uh, like Bashar said that the last uh, blow to the Atlantis, the main destruction happened 23,000 years ago. Uh, can you like kind of put the time around that? What happened after, what happened before? I, I tend to agree with Hancock and Bouval who point to a key event around 10,000 years ago actually, but I'm not, uh, I'm a, a physicist, I'm not a historian actually, and my oh. specialty is not dates. Uh, but. Clearly, around 10,000 years ago was one of the major events uh, when the, the water lines appeared around the Sphinx, for example. Uh, and uh, and it basically, what we say is that the device they called Toy Stone Fire Crystal Silmarion or Girku uh, was an implosive conjugate uh, piezo quartz device which, uh, because it entrained the low frequency harmonics, basically disturbed the gravity field, which is directly related to some of their catastrophe theories. But we remember that when you, um, they use that device to enslave people. Mm -hmm. And when you enslave people large scale, you actually destabilize gravity. Mm -hmm. And there are very few people who understand that physics, uh, but they did. 
And so one of the major lessons that needs to be learned here is what is the relationship of consciousness to stabilizing gravity? And that's one of my life missions to teach that. What do you think was a, an Ark of Covenant? The Ark of the Covenant was, well, first of all, it was a layered uh, a super dielectric uh, platinum group metal gold around the acacia wood in roughly golden ratio to create implosive capacitance. Primary function was non-destructive containment of radioactives. It was designed by the Syrians, but used by the Anunnaki, even though they didn't understand it well as a weapon primarily. And it was also used for gold powder manuf manufacture. And we know the physics because you can stabilize the monatomic version of the gold atom with implosive capacitance and it will become stable like a, this white powder, Holy Communion it was called. And it was served in a round white wafer. And um, it, was a, it was a form of food. And so it's used for many purposes. But basically it's, it's a phase conjugate dielectric implosive capacitance. And the lesson of how that's used to contain radioactives is critical that we teach. Mm, you mentioned Anunnaki. Uh, what do you think their genetic... Um genetic makeup are they draconians well the, the draco in alpha draconis it was these the north star at the time of the sumerians and it looked like the arabic letter l and as in elohim and um uh thuban theuba is the french book about that is was the home of the ancestral home of the draco at a time in which they were androgynous and only later did they become sexual, and that was really their downfall. Um, and they had then taken control of uh, many of the inhabitable stars in the Orion sector. But the fight that broke out, broke out that br brought the primary family here, Anu, Enki, and Lil, that fight broke out in the Pleiades, well described by AntonParks.com, I highly recommend. And that information is all at that original article, fractalfield.com slash fusion of the blood. But that fight was essentially with a matriarchy and that's how I began studying this whole story was because I, when I realized that every religion on planet Earth is dominated by fear of women. That's how they all started. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to know where fear of women came from, and I found out. And that came from E.T. It's very clear. And so all those religions were running from a matriarchy in the Orion sector, a Draco, actually. Mm -hmm. And that's why Enlil, who's otherwise known as Yahweh, had a, such, a, such a fear of women, actually. Mm -hmm. So, do you think Anunnaki were Dracos? Well, remember, the high dragons, these are Plasma Cloud, Siakar, uh, Archon, and you know, these are wonderful, intelligent interstellar beings. We see the, them in the, in the lenticular cloud sometimes. Uh, but, you know, the, the fallen part of the family that had this genetic disaster, we call Draco. But oh. the Uru Uras family, as well described to Anton Park, is a very big family. And that all big families have good guys and bad guys. <laughs> Okay. But the ones that, remember, when Enlil and Enki, they were here uh, administrating a gold mining operation. And Enlil thought the humans were snack food and slaves. Enki thought they were his artistic, wonderful creations that might save the day. They had a different opinion. We later called Enki Ra as an Abraham, Abraham. But, he, you know, he was trying to create some genetics that could be the vaccine in the Orion Wars. And if we do it right, he will succeed. Uh, thank you. Do you know who Elohim genetically? Well, Elohim was a name uh, um, like Yahweh, which was used by many, uh, many who were not. A lot of the wannabes call themselves a Yahweh. Yahweh just refers to the principle yod heh vah -Hey, which is two opposing light cones. So that is a name for a principle and not a person, actually. Same uh -huh. way with Jesus, I that is us, or Christos, crystallized. These are the names for wave principles. And the names for per specific individuals are boring by comparison. So, you know, Elohim... Uh, in general, you could conceive of those who are able to make the L, and we know exactly what that means. The skill to take memory into lucid dream and therefore through death requires being able to move your attention from the crest of the transverse to the longitudinal. And if you can do that, you can time travel and go through the heart of the sun and do the fun stuff. But it requires your attention to track a wave that goes superluminal. Um, thank you. Very good. Um, now, the fall of the humanity. Uh, there is a story that we were in a higher dimension, higher density, and we fell. Uh, can you... The, the term higher... The, the term, remember, 
Rotating charge stores inertia called mass. Rotating charge is a period named time. So time and mass are only named for rotating charge. So rotating charge, and if you superpose one rotating charge in one axis symmetry upon the next three uh, up to seven, you have a tetra cube. And then if you superpose the next axis of spin on a cube, say three dimensions, then you have a pentadodeca, the, literally the fourth dimension, which is only a name for the next superposed axis of spin symmetry. That's the only definition of going to the next dimension. Now, if you take the thread that is the dodeca down a helix called DNA, the fifth axis of spin then, and you braid the braid of the braid on the braid seven times, you have seven, seven spins outside, five spins inside, the geometry of the DNA imploding in the heart of the sun, the heart of the human, and the heart of hydrogen, the Anu. Um, that is the maximum number of axes of spin that can be superposed in any charged system, and therefore the only definition of the limit of the number of possible dimensions. So when you say you want to go to the next dimension, what you mean is, can I embed in the next longer wave of superposed charge rotation non-destructively? That's the only thing you mean. A very practical example of that is when you visualize the two tetra around the uh, humans that Drinville called the tetrahedral fire breath and the flower of life. You have the two tetras. But to actually go to the next dimension there, what you do is you tilt your chin up by the 32 degree chin angle of the sinks, embedding the tetra cube into a pentadodeca. And then you first get golden ratio implosion. And that's the moment at which you end parasites, parasite food. And the reason is because that's the point at which golden ratio creates the implosion that does all the good sorting, the function of pentacles in magic. I understand most of what you said. Um, so the aliens, we are channeling aliens, and they say they are in a different universe, different reality, and they step down to our density. Uh, and the, the main story is, is that we are sending, the humanity is ascending towards that world. Can you comment on that? Yes, when you get very coherent in a meditation or a dream, you're able to phase lock uh, much higher phase velocities in your aura, and the images then from what you're calling higher dimensions become visible. Uh, so it's, it's literally true. There are more axes of charge spin symmetry in the higher dimensions, and to get your attention there requires great stillness in this one. That is a useful metaphor, but it's not... The key thing to make a point here is this is not a description of separate substances. No, that is schizophrenia. That schizophrenia applies to any scientist who thinks that gravity is made of something different than electromagnetism. That person needs to be in a hospital for schizophrenia, anybody who believes that. Because the unified field is the only way to understand. So can you put a time frame on ascension? That's uh, one of the biggest questions we discuss, like almost every uh, webinar. Um, well, ascension is a description of a process by which your aura becomes phase coherent in higher rotations and frequency harmonics. And spectrum analyzing the EEG or using Therify are good examples. Um, and uh, so ascension is simply means that as the higher frequencies become phase locked in your aura, the information from those ways becomes available to you. That's cool. And the tetracuban dodeca is an example. Um, the Earth itself becomes available to those higher rotations more at certain times as well. A practical example. The reason why Agni Hotra, which is really phase conjugate plasma, creates fertility most precisely only at sunrise and sunset is phase conjugation. Now, if that sunrise and sunset is aligned with not just that, but Earth, Moon, Sun, and some intergalactic, then that's an even longer wave that's embedded. So the ascension process is simply the process of embedding in longer and longer waves by understanding how charge rotations are superimposed, literally a fractal field. So how far is the humanity to ascension? Like some people expect it next year, some people expect it in our lifetime, and um, some messages say we, we have like a, another more than 100 years to ascend as a, as a humanity? I think, unfortunately, that the humankind has chosen a near-death experience, which is probably the hard way to do it. But I think that's what we've chosen. Um, and uh, so our bad choices are going to come and get us pretty soon. Uh, in the meantime, I'm suggesting people learn uh, bliss process, and they choose community, and they choose to leave big cities and learn... Uh, uh, the, the usual, you know, community living in nature. 
so that in those environments you can have some bliss process and collective survival as well. Very practical. How I have is a gonna... very practical question to ask. Go ahead. Okay, you were talking about electromagnetism and I was recently told about a book called The Emotion Code and using magnets to release, like you can self-test with body, body testing, like which emotion um, to release and you run the magnet forward over your head three like from the front of your head to the back or up and down the spine three times to release the emotion are you aware of anything are you aware of this and or the efficacy of actually, using magnets for releasing trapped emotion um actually that sounds very interesting i think i'd like to read that book there's dozens of books on magnets and healing um and actually uh, you know, aligned magnetic lines is precisely what we're using at the imploder.com and therify.net. In fact, Elizabeth Rauscher agreed, I invented phase conjugate magnetics, which is simply getting magnetic lines to do that caduceus trick, actually. So yes, you can converge uh, human emotions by cascading them and magnets can help. I, I'll give you a practical little example to begin understanding that. The difference between the plus and minus side of a permanent magnet one is more centripetal than the other. So if you use the centripetal side, remember that China and the Americans use the I don't know what a centripetal side is, so could you explain that, please? Centripetal and centrifugal are names for a converging and diverging vortex. Going inside so, and outside. Yes, well, converge, diverge, uh, yin-yang. And um, the north-south magnets, and the... Uh, Western notion of north magnetic is the opposite of the oriental notion, so it's very confusing. But here's a way to, to test this for yourself. Say you had a toothache. If you use the south pole of a magnet, which is centripetal in the west, I believe, it will make the toothache worse, but increase the healing rate. If you use the north pole of the magnet, which is unpacking centrifugal, it would reduce the pain, but slow down the healing because the focus is reduced. So that's a beginning of understanding the critical nature of the polarity in magnetics. And then if you do that in a sequence, an array, which you're talking about, you can actually create charge implosion, which is the origin of all healing. Excellent. Thank you. I invite more questions. Thank you, Everybody go ahead. I have a question. Good. Um, so the the ascension per se that that it's happening it's not being um, caused by energies in in the universe and therefore causing us to wake up or are we waking ourselves up and how does the dna per se um play a role in this whole thing we, well we think the dna gradually br is braided mechanically more coherently, like knitting a sweater, the more you have bliss process, allowing literally longer waves to become coherent in the DNA's field. You know, if the thread is braided well in the, the string into the rope, eventually very thick rope can hold much longer waves coherently. And eventually waves the size of the solar system can embed in the DNA. And at that point, as your DNA becomes more coherent, you're more sensitive to these longer magnetic fields arriving, arising, for example, when the planets line up with the sun, for example. Uh, so those planetary alignments are as important as sunrise and sunset to someone doing Agnihotra to create healing. So long wave embedding is a short name for that process. And yes, okay. we wake ourselves up. Okay. We make so uh, as long uh, as as we're able to hold more of these waves, does that mean that uh, more awareness comes into play or are we just able to, exactly. okay. Yes, All no, right. exactly. What we're, call, what we're calling awareness is the available to persuade those waves to continue to converge at the center of our tornado. So when you're very still, the short wave embeds the long wave and eventually you as the, as the Kogi and the Carol know, eventually you call the mountain. This was called the sword and the stone. This is how John Dee steered the tornado that took out the Spanish Armada, which Shakespeare later called the Tempest. And, 
And what role does the sun play in this whole thing at the moment? The sun has everything to do with this. It's the most intelligent being in the solar system. The heart of the sun is an Anu. It's the only way in and out of here. If you're a sun god, it's the only way to graduate. The geometry of the solar flare periodicities, the geometry of the heart of hydrogen, the geometry of the Anu, the sun has everything to do with this evolution. Basically, the sun made us because stars need very specific. We make a centripetal force that stars need. 11 times it was measured when a million children sang the same song, the solar flares were changed dramatically. The sun goes, ah. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> and another, another note, um, how is it that, um, it, and I understand that there's climate, all kinds of things and what you breathe, um, but how is it that even though we are, in a lot of senses, descendant from um, the ET DNA, uh, we have, you know, many different races in us, that we look so different from them. Um, the, the Draco, most of them were 9 to 11 feet tall. Enki looked like a frog. Um, and they choose, chose the Cro-Magnon because it was the first creature they'd ever seen exhibit compassion, which Enki had never seen before in his life, I don't think. Uh, so the monkey gene had the passion, but the RH negative <laughs> the reptilian gene had the uh, longevity and the intellect. The problem is the, the inbreeding on the reptilian side was crashing and the vitality added by the monkey gene uh, produced a, a potential vaccine for the Orion Wars. So hopefully we get the best and worst of both sides. But uh, basically, if you believe Enki's mother, the Kadistu, from which we get the word life designers, had a very specific intent, eventually to create the seeds of a, of a, of a race of sun gods, which we can be if we can inhabit plasma the size of stars when we grow up. Okay, thank you. And one last question. Um, how Do you have any idea of how crucial our DNA is to this universe? I believe that there is a code that goes across thousands of light years for all those who use DNA because the central longitudinal radio DNA creates is inherently collectivizing. I mean that not only did every human on earth feel it on 9-11, but that exists across stars as well. And that code or discipline means that uh, it's just like when a, a Tibetan saint says, you can take shelter in my aura, but you're now no longer allowed to have negative emotions. <laughs> so, you know, to take shelter in the aura of the DNA discipline means that you will be kicked out eventually if you have bad hygiene. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. I will allow others to ask. I have a question, please. Hello, this is Safira. Um, my name is Safira. Okay, one question is about the 12 strand DNA. Uh, I was reading that actually we were all born with the capacity to, well, potentially born with the capacity to develop the 12 strand DNA as we grow in different stages some point but there is a way to get back to activating the 12 strands so i'm thinking if we if there was a way to really do that then maybe all the effort and all the different modalities used to get us to that place of bliss and understanding all what you're talking about which is so brilliant but way beyond what a lot of us can understand um would that be a way to get to where you are in a natural state do you want to say what I'm saying? Yes, um, it, it, a very useful question. The, the metaphor of 12 strands would cause any biologist to laugh in your face, and well, they should. However, once we understand the actual biophysics, the double strands of DNA, which has five rotations in that thread, if you take that thread and braid that, 
from longer, longer waist string th thread, fat rope, etc. Twelve times, uh, I'm sorry, seven more times codified by the seven spins of the tetra. Then you have seven spins on the outside and five spins on the inside. And that is literally 12 strands, but it's not 12 strands. It's 12 superposed long wave to short wave axes of rotation embedded in super coherent DNA, which I think you will actually find in the DNA of someone who has lots and lots of bliss, long wave coherence. Practical, well, maybe theoretical examples would be what they call microchloridians in the blood of Anakin Skywalker, <laughs> ability to bend, the force be with you. Or at the Montauk, it was called uh, boson seven. They could measure the phase coherence in DNA of those who could actually steer the time chair. Just to translate, it is the way the DNA is self-packaged in a very compact, very orderly manner within the nucleus. And what Dan is saying, there is certain rules, genetical rules, by which it is packaged. So these rules would be like 12 rules, basically. Well, the, the way it's braid embedded, literally, you got this thread, and you got to braid it right to be a string, then you got to braid the string right to become a rope, and then braid the rope right to be a fat rope, and eventually, you can photomicrograph toroidal long wave braided DNA, literally imploding. So what I'm trying to understand is, um, if that was blocked from the, the natural development of, of embedding into our being, understanding, music of the heart, or I listened to one of your previous videos, which was so brilliant. I'm trying to understand it. <laughs> but in any case, if that 12-strand DNA would naturally, I don't know, activate, I don't know what the right terminology is, so forgive me for that. Um, would we then come to this natural bliss and natural understanding and natural ascension, natural, all the yeah. things that we're trying to understand now? Well, uh, yes, that's what we're saying, but we're saying it, it does not happen arbitrarily. Most of that is the work to do the hygiene, to attract the charge, to have the bliss. That means the yoga, the diet, and the environment, and learning how to think thoughts with our, which are shareable. You know what you would do if you knew you were going to die very shortly? You get all your thoughts to be shareable so they can do the implosion. Did you know that the electric charge the black hole effect of near-death visions have been proven to be electrically contagious by surgeons. Ray Moody's work. Do you know why the death vision is an electric black hole? No. It's because it's the only way to get your charge waves imploded into the longitudinal collective unconscious. So if you can't do that kind of implosive sorting, you will not be able to lucid dream or take memory through death. And the discipline to do that in advance is called bliss, <laughs> which is hygiene. It's work. The live food diet, the yoga, the environment of charged air and water and food, and thinking thoughts which are pure principle and shareable, so all the ancestors will enjoy them. Okay, uh, yeah. Yes, thank you. I understand that. Um, what I'm saying is, would there be a time again, like apparently we're only this term junk, junk DNA and we're only allowed, or we only have access to a very, very small amount of what is actually there. And uh, if there would come a time again in humanity where the, the natural unfolding of all of our DNA capacity and strands would just bring us to the place you're talking about without the work. In other words, it should have been happening naturally. Well, you know, there was a big argument in the Catholic Church. Was grace something that God gave you? Was grace something that you had to work for? And the Catholic Church came up with the wrong answer. Does wrong. They said, no, grace is something God gives you. You don't have to work for it. And that's the opposite is the case. Grace, otherwise known as life force charge, is something you do work to get. It's called hygiene. Absolutely. That's the only way it's self-empowering. And... Uh, and the other thing is, I just would comment that the term junk DNA, sadly, was a total misnomer by those who simply did not understand that the spacing between braid strands is specifically what allowed implosion. So if you didn't have the DNA to do the spacing for the strands to mechanically line up shortwave to long, you could not get implosion or bliss or negentropy or all the cool stuff. So if you don't understand recursive breathing, then you think the spacers are junk. But if you understand the science, then there's no such thing as junk DNA. Thank you. 
Thank you for a great question. Thank you. How do you do your yoga? Is there any special way? Well, my lady's friend says I'm lousy at it. I'll tell you that. <laughs> but no, no, you know, I, I did some kundalini yoga and we have a wonderful yoga groups here. There's, you know, a thousand different kinds of yoga. But whatever you do, whether it's sacred gymnastic or yoga, it requires discipline. It Basically, it's simple. If you focus your attention correctly in a curvature of movement, that curvature will cause a charge implosion and you will feel a tingle in your fingertip or wherever the quality of grace of movement leads you. And that is a calculus called grace. And if you don't learn to accrete that charge, you're toast. <laughs> yeah, I, I uh, teach Reiki, uh, and we have my students here. And um, yeah, that's what I, one of the feelings of Reiki energy flowing through is this tingling in the fingers and tingling in the center of your palm. Can I ask our, a question we, about sacred gymnastics? What is that? Well, you know, yoga, sacred dance, Sufi, there's lots of terms for this, but uh, we called it sacred gymnastic in the Gurdjie school. Um, Castaneda called it the tensegrity movements. Uh, but these are it, actually the famous example in the climax of the movie, Meetings with Remarkable Men about Gurdjieff, they do the sacred gymnastics and the bliss was so intensive, they say you could feel it radiating as your hair stand, stood up in the celluloid of the film. <laughs> sacred gymnastics is how I learned some bliss work with, with Gurdjieff. Uh, I wanted to say, sorry. Well, I'm just curious, a lot of my, okay, a lot of, you know, when you go into states of, um, say I did holy fire, or sui holy fire Reiki, and I got ignited. So all of my visions, virtually all of my visions, and still in meditation, they involve gymnastics. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Um, and I don't, I mean, I used to take gymnastics, but my body likes to flip flop and turn on well, all these things. And I, and I find it perplexing because I've never met anybody who has these types vision of visions. And when I give Reiki and healing, it's like a dance also. Beautiful, beautiful. And so think of it. Think of the, the movement as a way to implode waves of charge. And Reiki is exactly the same. In the course we just did on um, longitudinal wave mechanics, we started with a picture of the geometric origin of the Reiki symbols. Example, the dichomio. The dichomio is actually the shadow you make when you embed a cube in a dodeca, pentodeca. And the reason is Whoa. it's called dichomio. <laughs> That's so the cool. reason reason that works is because that is the shadow of how you embed pent implosive charge charge implosion in tetracubic and if you visualize that connection of how to embed cube in pentodeca that which is the dichomio actually you're initiating charge implosion the wind to center within which is the origin of all healing you have a very scientific explanation for all the things that I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I think your your in, intuition is probably u more useful than my science. When we put them together, we have fun. It's all good. Uh, talking about uh, sexual energy and sexual orientation, uh, do you have a theory? What is um, how the field or the electromagnetics of men and women are different and how the sexual orientation is encoded in the in the field well we teach an elaborate biophysics of the relationship of sexual energy to kundalini for example uh at goldenmean.info slash kundalini and we think when wilhelm reich wrote his book the function of the orgasm he was literally clueless of the function of the orgasm um that the ultraviolet gathered cellular emissions we we're talking about cancer that foreplay brings the ultraviolet to the tailbone. Scorpios love to talk about this. And yes. the vestigial horse hairs suck that ultraviolet up the spine liquid pump. And we know how it's measured actually in the microwave, microwave scanning for Kundalini, Bob Dratch's work. And we know how it arrives at the brain crown. So the short summary is uh, conserved sexual energy is the, 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 the torch that lights Kundalini but that doesn't mean you should always conserve sexual energy, but it needs to be available. And the opposite of that, of course, is cancer. So the ultraviolet component 
of orgasm, which R Wilhelm Reich so painfully misunderstood. He just said, orgasms is needed to avoid cancer, had no clue that it could go up the spine liquid pump. Um, so, and the difference between male and female Kundalini is an example that <clears throat> the male Kundalini is more explosive, which means you can, you can go out there and go to the edges of the universe, or the female is more fractal. So the male is at more risk to loss of immortality, but the female is uh, closer to the center of immortality, which is the fractality, basically because eggs are far more fractal than seeds. And what about sexual orientation? Uh, can, would it be physically impossible to measure uh, the sexual orientation? Um, <clears throat> well, it's, it's an interesting question. Um, the, the testosterone function in Kundalini is far more explosive. Uh, and in my case, you know, explodes at the top of your head and the top of your head feels like a red hot coal that you can't put out, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas the female Kundalini is far more grounded usually. Uh, Bentoff, for example, had his Kundalini out his solar plexus. Mine was always burning out the top of my head, you know. Same with me. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, and Bentoff described them as seeing through the heart of the sun as a result similarly, actually, and he was my teacher. But, um, but you know, for example, let's take an example of your question. Um, would, uh, you know, homosexual lovemaking have more or less spiritual function? That'd be a rel related question. And my view would be that there would be more natural voltage difference between a male and female. So a slightly greater increase in the potential of heterosexual tantra to implode. However, I feel that's far overshadowed by the beauty of human love itself. And that can exist between men and women. It doesn't matter a bit in the long run. And so I admire every kind of love anywhere exists. And sharing passion at every any level is better than none at all. It's a wonderful thing. I would is, it, is it in fact better even if you're not in like a committed idea or a loving idea? Is it still better to have better to well, engage than not engage in a spiritual spiritually speaking? Remember that the ultimate goal, health. Yeah, the ultimate goal is any form of plasma implosion that creates the thread to the sustainable. And in normally when we're young, we don't have quite the voltage to do it ourselves. You know, a, a self-generated bliss is not quite as intense as shared generated bliss, plasma fusion. So having a partner is good for a while. But eventually, of course, you need to be able to do it by yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Going back to the idea of homosexuality, I would assume that, uh, you know, some people are bisexual, but, you know, extreme cases when you're like on the, on the extreme extreme side of the scale, male homosexual would, I would assume, uh, would have a certain pattern of physical vibration, which is of females or feminine. It would be like just some sort of uh, a mutant, which would have a different... A, a male body, but fem feminine, um, some sort of feminine electrical pattern. You know, I think humans are way too ridiculously fixated on this idea of sexual differences. And in terms of whether your plasma is going to get through the heart of the sun in the end, it's really trivial. You know, you get some lessons for a while by playing it being male or female, but ultimately getting your plasma through the heart of the sun with intense bliss, female or male is not the issue. For a while, you get a toolbox, you know, a penis or a vagina. But in the end, <laughs> that's trivial. Wonderful. That's a good answer. Well, you know, I think it's, it's natural because remember, the story is that it was when the Draco engaged in heterosexuality from being androgynous that they had their genetic disaster. So, of course, in order to be a vaccine for the Orion Wars, we have to go through this melodrama. <laughs> There's even a story about this that that Enki actually, when he was using what's called the um, inceptive cyborg effect by making the Akambaro clay figurines, which is literally the physics of magic, because if you put a, a fluted axolotl clay figure in a cage, the axolotl will actually develop a flute in its ears that's measured. So you can use clay, the physics of witchcraft is, is real. So Enki was making uh, humans with very large penises, actually. <laughs> and you know why? 
Why? Yes, we're oversexed, but by making us oversexed, he made us hard to control, and that's good if you got a problem with Dracos in the neighborhood. Ah. Yeah, I heard that Atlantis was was engaged in uh, engineering, genetic engineering to create uh, certain extreme sexual I, cases. I mean, the the whole planet is a story of genetic. The, the, the Hebrew alphabet is actually the sequence of, of DNA codons. It's about genetic engineering. The Sumerian elixirs by George Merkel, these are waveguides in the Sumerian symbol structure to focus and make subcellular organelles. Everything about the ancient history of the planet is a story of genetic engineering. Uh, by the way, um, do you know any, any, any anything about the uh, origin of Jews or Semites, or Jew, Jews and Arabs? Uh, is there any like special extraterrestrial race who uh, created this race for certain reasons? Well, I believe that Enlil was Yahweh, and he was famous for murdering and hating humans actually you can read it's, it's not a good story uh okay. and and the, the flag of alpha draconis you know double triangle the dracos shape of their starcraft is the flag of israel so this is not such a beautiful story and he tried to convince them that they were the chosen people because you know he was he was controlling the bloodline but, but later actually that story becomes a bit trivial in history too but um, that's the Enki and Lil story, and ultimately that's boring too. But what you're talking about, the difference between Ashkenaz and Sephardic, the reason the Ashkenaz chose the Jewish religion was purely political. It's ultimately boring. Okay, okay. Um, what about the greys? Do we have uh, Zeta greys, other greys, Yael, any other greys? I think there were there were quite a few different groups, mostly from Zeta Reticuli, and they are a good example because they're a vaccine to our drama because they suffered the indignity of Draco genetic mutilation thousands of years before we did. So looking at their problem is instructive to ours. They lost the ability to sexually replicate actually and ability literally to have a soul. And so, you know, when the when the Greys originally abducted the humans after the Eisenhower treaties, they 90% were indigenous people because they could lose a dream. And that's the beginning of ensoulment, exactly what the Greys did not have. I didn't know that they took indigenous people. 90% uh, of them were lucid dreaming or had some indigenous blood, I believe. Wow. What's ensoulment? Ensoulment basically is when you're your DNA and aura become implosive enough to lucid dream, take memory through death, and all the good stuff. Exactly what the Dracos and the Greys lost. That's why we're a vaccine to their wars. Um, and Solomon basically... Is that why they want to hybrid with us? Absolutely, absolutely. It's, Is it's that why, healthy for us? It's, it's, it's why the Jews who can't lucid dream are always trying to marry indigenous peoples. <laughs> Because if you, if you live on the same magnetic line for 10,000 years, you can lucid dream. Your DNA embeds. Yay. Is that good for us as humans to be there, whatever? Well, you know, we need no longer be spawn of the Nephilim. You know who said that? Right. <laughs> it, but, you know, it, it's good that, let's put it this way. If you think a parasite in your stomach is evil, Think about this. If you ate dead food, then you're going to need a parasite in your guts to eat the death out of you. If you eat a dead idea, like God is outside you, then you're going to need a parasite like a priest. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. Very interesting. I invite more questions. We have about half hour left, a little less, 25 minutes. Be thankful for your parasites. <laughs> Um, David, can you please talk more about the effect of emotions, uh, like the power and the effect of emotions? I was watching a video that uh, Max put up of some of your teachings about the music of the heart and whether emotions affect our DNA or DNA affect our emotions. And are we always supposed to try and be positive because there is also a polarity of quote, positive and negative, which doesn't mean good or bad, but so is it possible to talk more about our emotions and how they affect us and what kind of control or lack of control is good to have over them? Well, thank you for asking the right question. I, I put a, a link here where I put the Centic 
geometric waveforms as documented in the psychophysics of music for the individual emotions, joy, pride, awe, anger, pity, fear, which was close to my heart. That was my graduate psychophysiology. We were the first lab in the world to electrically measure the difference between fear and anger with eight psychophysiological vari variables on our polygraph. I built that polygraph. Um, so to summarize, the if you ask someone to touch a button and it, imagine love versus say anger, and you make a graph of the change in pressure over time, as uh, Manfred Klein's did about a million times in the Centix work, the wave shapes change in pressure over time for love will create a pressure wave which has a pressure maxima at golden ratio 0.618 into duration. Whereas anger will be one over seven max destructive interference. The way that's practically applied, how Manfred Klein's learned to do that was he was studying how to touch a violin string. He was a concert violinist to make people cry. And so later we realized, for example, that this perfect centic wave shape for grief is actually the shape of uh, <clears throat> Mary, the fold of Mary's dress and Michelangelo's Pieta. And the shape of the waveform for love is precisely the shape of the perfect birth canal. So basically what we, we do when we enact emotions, we're, we're enacting very accurate long wave, uh, wave shapes to initiate implosion. When Jesus went into the temple to kick out the money changers, he exhibited the centic waveform for anger, which is one over seven, which is max destructive wave interference, which is fine to use in the short term, but if you identify with it, you're dead. <laughs> uh, whereas when you go through the perfect birth canal, which reaches max pressure at golden ratio, creating the implosion that brings memory through, through birth, the physics of all rebirthing, the centic waveform for love, when you understand that physics, you generate all the implosion possible in the aura, and there's a communion of memory. We call it coherent emotion. So I'm are sorry. They useful? Are they useful? Oh, Max, can I please continue? Because oh, please. I, I accidentally muted my mic. I, I apologize. Right. Sure. Thank you, thank you, David, for that answer. Oh, no, David, so, then. There are people who, oh, uh, sorry, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm <laughs> getting it. Um, so many people experience depression. Uh, I experienced depression to the point where it's like it's being something being so pushed down that it's frozen. Uh, so how can I use, um, I don't know, is that coming from some damaged DNA then or, or years of a certain a repeated experience, like people who are abused as children, um, they get sort of like a repeated, repeated pattern where they just then get locked into something in their DNA. Is there a way out of it, in positive, from a scientific point of view? Ah, well, you know, you talk about depression, but you're asking the best questions, and this would say something, I would think, dear. But l let me give you an example here. <laughs> Thank you. Let me give you an example here. When we discovered that our therified plasma system was being used exclusively in three countries successfully against addiction, what we discovered was that if you can even have one bliss euphoria experience, it's the end of addiction because basically the body is simply seeking a peak perception moment at which to sort memory. So if you're continuously unable to reach a bliss experience, that would be depressing. <laughs> if you have any way of getting the hygiene to have a bliss experience, it is the electrical opposite of depression and addiction. So I would suggest a couple things, obviously. One would be you know, the hygiene to really get charged in your aura. The other is to go back and find the pain and go through the pain. And the third would be maybe to try the therapy. It's fun because any kind of bliss experience, even sacred gymnastic with a group, would be the opposite of depression. Yes. Can you please post that therapy link? Because I, I think it was in the beginning and I missed the very beginning. I will collect all the links and post on uh, post them under the video. Oh, thank yeah, you. Man. Put yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
You're welcome. So Thank I you. have a question because I've experienced really blissed out states, but I also have a history of addiction. Oh, yeah. And I would not say that one repla- having a blissed out state or even like months and months on end of a blissed out state nullifies addiction. That's a very interesting, interesting comment there. You know, my work in brainwave biofeedback started with addiction treatment with the famous Marty Woodkey. You can find him, runs a big uh, clinic in uh, Santa Barbara, I think. And what we showed there was that um, I had found that those who cannot make brainwave alpha, which is really Schumann, 8 to 12 hertz, that when they close their eyes, they see dark. But those who can make brainwave alpha, when they close their eyes, they can see light. We know the physics of why, because alpha, beta, golden ratio, is how you implode plasma. It's how you get light in your head. So Marty Woodke had proved physiologically that on the same day that you teach a, an alcoholic how to make brainwave alpha with biofeedback, on that day, the next drink of beer would not taste good. And, and, uh, <laughs> and why this I, I'm, I'm laughing because, I mean, okay. Mm, I will say that, so what that would, meditation has changed a need, but when one starts to experience like Kundalini or like downloads from angelics or other energies um, which feel like magic free drugs sometimes they're so overwhelming that yes. the addiction pops in to calm it down yes. or that, that that was my experience yeah no I totally hear you and that sounds very real to me and I appreciate look I, I think the more intense the bliss gets the more likely it is to get out of control. Absolutely. And there's all kinds of perversions associated with Scorpios and Kundalinis. And th- what this means is the more intense the bliss, the more discipline you need. And chances are the more rigorous, the pure principle scientific metaphor you need to hold it together and understand. Because at some point, you know, you think you're going to be God and you go off the deep end famous example in graduate school we read the book three christ of ypsilanti and they put three people medically hospitalized for believing they were jesus in one room and turned on a tape recorder and the reason for these phenomena is clear the collective plasma has a need to commune literally the christos the christ principle to come to one focus where all memories can converge but if you don't understand what that means you know, our word for domain electrically is our word for God for a very good reason. What's that reason? A dominus vobiscum. <laughs> you know, King Arthur and the land were one because when you put on the crown, if your aura is big enough to control the climate, then you are the king. Actually, it means that the domain of the land is the electric domain of your aura. Dominus Fobiscum, the, domino, the dominant one is the one who has the domain. It's an electrical domain. So big auras are by definition the climate regulators. They're the, that's why there's a legal limit to the rain in Camelot. <laughs> and my Kundalini makes rain all the time. So does, so does Therify. Ah, oh. interesting. So I've always had the understanding that when, and sexuality is, as you know, so extremely suppressed in many societies, not all. And it, this is like purposely infiltrated into us or manipulated or mind control or whatever, so that we do not come into our power. So I'm listening throughout this time and those who, the, the suppression of sexual energy can lead to illness and lack of creation, creativity. Yeah. Is that what you're ultimately saying? I have, it's one of my favorite stories I use for ads for the National Football League that Jungian analysis of football was from the Balinese cockfight, that if you are repressed and 
uh, it's called urge to touch frustrated turns to anger by definition. You need to push out the poison pellet, the pigskin that is the anger that results, which is why our boys have to be crucified at their bodies with football instead of having touch permissive behavior. Touch permissive behavior creates rain. Patriarchy creates desert. It's been proven. So absolutely, you know, coming of age of, in Samoa and, the, and uh, all of the matriarchies made rain. All the patriarchies made deserts. There's a clue. The water vapor only converges when there's permission to touch. That's how you make a droplet called and, physics and precipitation. And yet we are in such a touchless society. Exactly. And, and there is the problem. We need touch permissive behaviors to be taught to our young people. That's the real meaning of the desertification and patriarchy the book by James DeMayo, actually. So teaching touch permissive behavior is the same as cell metabolism. It's touch permissive behavior loss that causes cancer. Touch permissive behavior for young people create, cause, creates creativity instead of repression. Absolutely. Which, you know, sacred dance, Sufi dance, et cetera, et cetera. But we're so afraid of touch. And the reason we are is that, you know, the Drake, same Draco ancestors who feared women fear sexuality because, of course, that creates the bliss, which is the end of the enslavement. So it, the short summary is bliss is the end of enslavement and sexuality is a big part of that. Mm -hmm. I created a lot of rain in San Diego this winter. Good work. <laughs> Good work. Planting the seed for waves to share. You know, and when a child looks up at a cloud and puts a hole in the cloud, as most any healthy child can do if they're standing barefoot in the mud, uh, the reason is because their focused attention creates electrically centripetal force, which is what teaches vapor to form droplets. Um, uh, you mentioned angels. Do, uh, actually, we mentioned angels. Uh, do you have anything about angels? I think we have the most advanced school of angel science on the planet, goldenmean.info slash ophanum. And I say that with some prejudice because that was John Dee's work, and I'm very close to that. But basically, interstellar plasma is intelligent. Any physicist who's part of the Plasma Universe Project agrees. An interstellar plasma has a symmetry law of exchanging charge, and that's called the Ophanum Enochian alphabet. John D. discovered it was used to make the movie Stargate for a good reason, and it's a hypercube. It's basically charge implosion. It's basically how you call, call big tornadoes. And if you don't know how to steer big tornadoes, then you deserve tornadoes that are destructive. Uh-huh. Would, would you care so the, to share on how we can steer a tornado? Well, that's what the, the, that whole web. There's a big Facebook group now, too, that formed as a result. GoldenMean.info slash Ophanum. It's now the Facebook group called Alchemy Ophanum Enochian. And it's based on John Dee's work. And it, the short summary was that um, the index of how plasma donuts communicate becomes this basically angel language. And if you learn to invoke them in, in sequence, you can call very large plasma beings. Ophanum and uh, you know, uh, Michael Sarian thought they were evil. Well, they're not good or evil, they're just big. <laughs> and But if you don't, the story is that the large angelic plasma beings consider us drunk because we don't call them. And they're right, because our environment will always be in chaos. It's as simple as learning to work with the elemental forces and eventually the gnomes and the undines and eventually the angelic forces. And, it's and literally that just very... using the the energies that we are aware of that are here to help us. Yes, yes okay. they're very large plasma beings who are very happy to be involved in nurturing us. But these plasma beings need us to become coherent. And that's what learning angel alphabets is about. I recommend that work. These are rituals that can control big storms, but that's only the beginning. Dan, I have one more question. Um, before I ask it, I would like to thank you for being here with us today because I know that we're more, most of us, not all, probably more or less a lay audience and it takes a lot of patience to want to talk at your level um, to make us understand. So uh, thank you for that. I also find genius, it's, it's almost a bliss experience being here 
listening to you. Even though I can't grok all of it, I'm trying to contextual, contextually get it. But um, it's almost a bliss just listening because I, I love genius. So I want to well, thank you for that. Well, <laughs> Don't, don't thank me too much. You know, my homework assignment here is to teach. Otherwise, I don't graduate. So you're giving me an opportunity to do my homework. So we need each other. Thank you, dear. <laughs> thank you. And I have one last question. So who is God for you uh, in your understanding? Uh, we've talked about Yahweh and the different beings under God. Um, I, I really have trouble with the concept that we were just created by different ETs and there's no great great love and great intention behind <laughs> it, except slavery for gold mining and, and you know, vaccines and, you know, is there a God behind all of this from your experience and who would that be? This, this is really the right question, again, the right question, dear. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, God, God is God is the, the most coherent plasma being in your neighborhood. And as you grow up, that gets bigger. For our neighborhood, uh, God is the is the solar being. Actually, it's a plasma. A great amount of intent there, but at an interstellar level, there's a black hole at the center of our galaxy, which is extremely mindful. Again, the the um, the uh, the Anunnaki they call them the Kadistu or the life designers, or uh, or the or or the watchers. Many names. But as as we get larger in aura, we come to the intention of larger and larger plasma beings. And we all ca always call them God. But this is just the beginning of understanding how a small plasma being can thrive only when embedded in a larger one. So it's like Bentov's book, uh, after stalking the wild pendulum on the biomechanics of Kundalini, he wrote the cosmic comic book in which he drew comic book pictures for what he saw in his Kundalini. And he sailed out through the heart of the solar system, saw through the eye of the earth, the eye of the sun. And eventually he saw interstellar beings, black holes, and he zoomed in and he saw these black holes had the geometry of the letter Ankh and Aleph and Omega and their name and their shape and their waveform and their function was one. So these are great interstellar beings who are very mindful and they have grown up. And the idea of God is a, a good introduction to really interstellar plasma physics based on hygiene and phase discipline. And so religion on our planet, I think, was obsolete hundreds of years ago. Now we need to teach the hygiene based on science, which makes religion even more beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. Um, so that's the picture I illustrated what you said. <laughs> it's gorgeous. <laughs> the wave turning inside out. It's wonderful. I like it. All right. Um, so I felt that you uh, learned a way to deal with mainstream censorship and you evolved in the last uh, many years. Can you little share about that? Well, I, I got lucky and got international, uh, and um, I, I've been blessed. But my blessing depends on continuing to do my homework, which is actually to become a share of a wave. So I'm happy to be here and share. But no, I was based in Australia, in Europe, and I've taught in most every major Western city in the world, and I've been very fortunate. And my job, since so many gifts have been giving, given to me now, is to share well. and. I have a lot of fun nowadays because we have this technology group, implosiongroup.com, with new major partners. And so we're actually successful economically as well. So I'm a happy camper and I'm happy to share. Thank you. Wow. And um, my last question, I guess, my last prepared question is, um, can you kind of give us um, a guidance in terms of communities in terms of like really you you shared a lot of websites and some of them are yours and some of them your friends but can you basically describe the physical people there what are the communities how do you what's the process how do you meet how do you communicate what are the means like facebook other electronic means physical means what is the process how do you develop all of that communally well that's the right question because community is the issue but I would say, you know, in almost every country, actual forming real communities is virtually made impossible by the laws. And Europe is no different than anywhere else. 
you know, so the real community is very hard. We have a, a Tibetan group here in France that we're working with, and there's all kinds of interest, and things are cooking nicely, but it's very, very difficult. In Australia, Byron Bay, real consciousness capital, lots of community experiments going on there, and we encourage those. I mean, you're, you're right, really, it may be our best hope for community in ways online, and Facebook and these things have been wonderful. It's a real way to form community. So I, I don't know I'm a, if I'm an expert on that, but I do know it is the right challenge. What is the way? How do you approach this? Uh, I guess you're pretty well known, so people come to you. But for us who want to join, which path would you suggest? So we go to the websites you mentioned, but how to get involved? Well, that's a simple question. How to get involved? Yes. Um, my partner is helping form Ananda Marga communities. There's an amazing one in Portugal, um, and they're looking at a Tibetan community here in France. There are many experiments underway, and I'm really setting as my next task to be helpful in that regard. But right now... Are we the sound? Are the sound? Can you hear me? Okay, can you, we can hear you now. To be yeah. helpful, yes. Yes, I, I, I'm not as successful at being helpful in forming community yet, and I'm working on that, because you're right, we need to do that. So uh, stay tuned. I hope to have more in the future. We're having a wonderful conference here in South France coming up, at which we'll be talking about that in part, fractalfield.com slash 2017. So is it English-speaking conference? Yes, that's, we're having an English-speaking conference followed by a French-speaking one. Uh -huh. uh, it's about plasma, but we'll be talking about community as well. But, um, you know, I, I, let's work on that together. I'm still, that's a struggle, because forming community has been made politically impossible in almost any country on the planet, specifically because any group that can sustainably form a bliss process, by definition, forms a bo body polis. And that plasma field is the only real definition of politics, polis. And so inherently, by definition, a group that has a bliss process together replaces biologically the local government. And so every local government is threatened by that until governments realize that collective bliss is the definition of collective government for biology. My solution for that is that the community got to be tribal, decentralized, and it is the vibration which defines the community, not the center. And this way it's impossible to restrict it because the vibration can uh, replicate itself. Well, that's, that's a good way of talking about it. it. It's another way of saying, if the group has a mechanism for collective bliss, they will eventually be able to lucid dream together and go through the heart of the sun together, which is the only way to graduate. Usually it starts with learning to cry together. Right. Yay, let's do the crying meditation. I'm into crying last lately very much. Uh, so, uh, what is what are your favorite online groups, online uh, communities, like you know, forums and things of that sort? Uh, well, you know, we have the Fractal Field Forum at Facebook, and uh, our YouTube is. We, we think if you if you do a search on YouTube for Dan Winter, you come up with six million videos, more than half of which are me. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, you know, we're trying to make it shareable. Maybe we'll succeed, uh, but I'm not saying we have any magic solutions to that. But uh, but where are you active? Where do you write? Where do you comment? What is your area of uh, socializing online? Uh, Facebook, uh, Fractal Field, uh, Fractal Field on Facebook. Yes. Okay. We have, well, there's 10,000 or so there. And how do you socialize with um, founders in the field? What is your way to connect to them? Uh, with founders, I'm sorry? Founders of the scientific founders of the field. Oh! Like other oh, well, scientists. Yes. Implosiongroup.com lists about 20 of our technologies. We have major new uh, business partners, technology partners, and it, we think we have the best uh, zero-point physicists on the planet in our group. And if you have people with s real serious technology skills, we'd love to meet them. But really, you, you need to do your homework and have some serious t technology and science skills to contribute initially. But uh, it's just amazing that science people, uh, Mark Rohrbau is leading some of the physics people, uh, Bill Donovan Elizabeth, who knows most every nonlinear 
uh, zero point energy inventor on the planet, as do I. Uh, we have some amazing people uh, in implosiongroup.com uh, technology research now. And we, we really think that we, we have so, so, so many breakthroughs coming through now that we're just uh, delighted. So what is the means of connecting to them? How do you connect? Do you like talk on the phone, chat on Skype? Well, for now, you know, we're introducing core people to that group, but it, it would really start by perhaps sending an email, info at fractalfield.com, and what can you contribute right now? And, and, oh, I mean, and, how do you personally, like, as Dan Winter, what do you, how do you communicate? Do you meet with them physically, or do you online yeah, connect? We have, we have international conference calls almost every day, actually. Um, ah. we, it, it, you can see some of these groups, implosionamp.com, implosiongroup.com, conjugate1.com. Uh, we have a, a bunch of real high technology. And a lot of these are related to therify.net, our plasma work. But basically, we have implosion hydrogen project, implosion vorticity, uh, implosive capacitance, uh, bioactivefield.com. These are all websites that we do. So you Actually, guys that I do. meet on video conference calls and you do business there? Yeah. Yeah, um, we have a lot of, uh, you see, this this group, um, uh, Energime, uh, has big contracts out of China, Thailand, and Philippines uh, to do implosion uh, practical technology. We just uh, licensed multi-million dollar Tesla turbine technology to go to with the world's leading battery technology called the Red Sun. Uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, technology that's, uh, I think, really going to, and we can include, this is very synergetic to the uh, nickel powder fusion technology, the next step past Rossi, and we think we understand the isotope transitions better than anybody. So yeah, we think we really are making some wonderful progress there. Oh, so you're actually doing business these days. Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah. With, with wonderful support team. Wow. We want you more on our webinars. It it was uh, I will listen to that several times just to make notes and to research what 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 you mentioned. It was um, way over my head, like tons of information. I understood some of the terms, but some I have to still look up. But really, really, thank you for inviting me, and let's make this shareable. Uh, that link, implosiongroup.com, really is a link to the technologies, and fractalfield.com has all the index. Happy to make this shareable, and let's stay in touch to how we can serve each other practically. And I'm delighted to meet all the really sincere people who ask questions. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, we have a few people who speak galactic languages. Would you like to listen to their blessings? That might uh, implode your, some of our uh, waves. Okay, okay. So, uh, Brian, are you up to doing the blessing? Anyone? Hello, can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, Brian, yay. And uh, yeah. li line up to the you know, Sabrina and uh, whoever is is next. Whoever wants okay. to go. Uh, did Sabrina? I think had one last question. Can she answer oh. or ask real quick, Max? Sure, I'm fine. Go ahead, Sabrina. Yeah, I just wanted to ask him just on, on the practical sense, um, uh, um, you know, as simple as you can put it, in terms of the emotional and the physical body. Um, why do you think it's it's the best thing to do the best homework um, for for people who are struggling with the emotions and for people who are struggling with physical illnesses? Well, uh, you know, aside from the yoga and the diet, uh, the kind of primal scream and rebirthing to get at the core emotions behind our frustrations and anger. And ultimately, when the passion is released, which then becomes bliss, you know, it's it's just frustrated emotion. That's what it all is. And actually, you know, one practical way to do that is to work to form a soul group, a group that starts by crying together and then doing their yoga together and eventually lose to dreaming together. Any kind of a soul group will move you in that direction. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate that Thanks. answer. For I believe that also, and and uh, you just uh, confirm uh, what I think. Uh, so I thank you for that. Go ahead, Brian. Thank, thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yes. Can you hear me, okay, Max? Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It cuts out a little glitchy here, but I'll try my best here. Your sound All is right. good. 
Salia kata neshi at the gea. San neshakali rokolo son no kotuati. Ilianani a kaka so shot at yea. Shanani liakan nana salakoto watua. A salayan neshi lia kataga. Ninio kokoi salia shanaya o kuata nani. Shalaria nagoku. Shaki a kokurakaya. Shanu kulu takeniya kashakutu tu alaraniya kushtu tu atana shaleya tatiya. You don't have a translation, right? Ah, no. Sabrina, okay. <laughs> would you like to go next? Okay. Takarikite ni kikiri a kalalio to noro korokota kia korona ya kati e kia kotu wako wakate kiti kiti ne ki kari a kalani a kato korata ni a kato e keri a ndi a ria kia ti to noro kona ni a kia tanani a kato rokoto tu anti teri kari a ndoro kalari a korotu to rono ndoro kari a kalandi a ria kato ruatata ni ki kia kotu tu ruatati. And I have a slight translation. I don't have the entire thing, but I have some of it. Okay. And um, may you use all the information that comes to you in a wise way, in a way that is a blessing, not only for you, but for humanity as a whole. May you all know that is part of the fractal, you are just as important as the whole. May you all know that the importance of the DNA will be revealed to all of you in such a way that your body will go, ah. Wow, makes sense. Uh, Safira, do you have anything? Oh. Um, Thank you for asking, Max. Not at the moment. Thank you. I do. Okay. Do you want me to tone or speak languages? Whatever is whatever is coming. <laughs> Namaste. 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 I think we are done with that. Thank you very much, Dan. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Oh, I look forward to sharing again and nice to meet you all. And do send me the web link when it's available. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Max. Bye. 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 Bye.